Not so long ago, in a tranquil forest community, all of the wildlife creatures were getting ready for winter. The critters that headed south were beginning to make travel plans, and the ducks and geese had special exercise classes every morning to get in shape for their long flight. Winter season preparations were underway, however, all of the forest dwellers could sense that changes were coming. Sandy Chipmunk was starting her fifth year at the nut bank. She had mastered every job and was now in charge of watching over the nut sorters and throwers. Sandy's job was to make sure that all of the inhabitants worked well together to provide an abundant nut bank for those who would remain in the forest during the winter season. She had built a reputation of remarkable fairness. There were few complaints and happiness seemed to be the rule of thumb. But suddenly things changed. Sandy was surprised by the arrival of a large squirrel with an overly big tail whose very presence took over the office that was hollowed out in the crook of the tree. May I help you? Sandy asked. May you help me? I am here to help you, Missy. I've been hired by the pretender to oversee this operation. Take some responsibility off your shoulders, pretty young thing. Oh, Sandy said. She didn't know that she was getting a new boss. Yes, little dear. Come and help me get the dirt from my tail. I am tired and I need your help. What a good girl you are. My name is Donald, but you can call me Darlin' Don. Come sit close to me. Let me tell you about what I'm going to do during the white season and how we are going to make a fortune selling the nuts. Sandy was uncomfortable as Don began telling her about his plan to charge the winter forest dwellers a fee for the nuts. Nuts had never cost anything. Everyone worked for the good of each other. When Sandy tried to ask questions, Don would just wrap his tail around her tighter and pull her closer to him. Sandy realized that this situation was bad, but she wasn't sure what to do about it. Over the next few weeks, when Sandy was at the nut bank, she noticed that Don was extra chatty with some of the other squirrels. She also noticed that Don's bushy tail would brush up against some of the female chipmunks. Sandy asked them if Don's behavior made them feel as uncomfortable. Not surprisingly, they all replied that it did. They talked about what they thought they should do about Don's conduct. It was upsetting to them. Sandy knew that Don's antics were wrong. If something wasn't done, their harvest would be in jeopardy. She also knew that if the other chipmunks got to the point of such uneasiness, they may leave the forest and the community that they had built. Ultimately, if nothing was done about Don's behavior, these things would all upset the functioning of the forest they had all worked so hard to maintain. Sandy originally suggested to the others that they try to avoid Don altogether. If they focused on gathering and throwing nuts, then maybe Don would leave them alone. That didn't work. But then Sandy suggested they tell Don his bushy tail was too big for the nut bank. But that didn't work either. None of the others were willing to say anything to Don. Harvesting the nuts was too important of a job. Lastly, Sandy asked the other squirrels and chipmunks if they would go with her to talk to the wise one, the owl who root the forest, and the pretender, the wise one's advisor. Since the pretender had hired Don, he would certainly be shocked to know that Don was bothering the other work crews and making plans to hijack the nut harvest. Sandy was at a loss. The others were afraid to speak up because the risks were just too great. Sandy knew she had to do something to stop Don's unacceptable behavior right away. She couldn't wait any longer for the others to come around to her way of thinking. It all became clear to Sandy that she would have to go it alone and see the wise one and the pretender. The wise one had always supported Sandy's work and had an open nest policy. She always felt safe there. Surely he would help them. Sandy gathered all of the courage she had. Then she rushed to the wise one's tree and scurried up the branches. She cleared her throat and said, <clears throat> Excuse me, wise one, may I talk to you? Who, who is that? Who talks to me? Oh, Sandy, always a pleasure. Come in, come in. I was just looking over our forest, admiring what we have. Wise one, Don, the man that has been hired to run the nut bank, wants to sell our nuts and make a profit on them. That is not something we had ever done. He wraps his tail around me and he wants me to groom it, too, she blurted out. Who, who, who told you that? That is not true. I assure you that. Who, who, the wise one said. Sandy, you are valuable to me and to our forest. I hired you because I knew you could watch the others so that we could have a bountiful winter harvest. I do not want you and the others to feel scared in any way. I will do with this so everyone can feel secure for the winter months and our harvest work can continue. Thank you for coming to talk with me. The wise one loved his forest more than anything. He had taken great pride in all the way the animals coexisted and helped each other. For many years, he was able to sit in his nest and observe all of the accomplishments. He was an old owl, and he knew that he would not be ruler forever. He recruited the pretender to be his protege. Along with Don, there were many other dangers in the forest. The wise one and the pretender discussed what should be done. Don was originally brought to the forest as a protected species. Despite Don's questionable past, his current behaviors weren't something the wise one was ready to deal with. 
After much discussion, the wise one and the pretender were without any acceptable solutions. Sandy was hopeful that the forest would return to normal, but sadly, over the next several weeks, Don kept coming to work in the forest and interrupting the nut gathering and throwing. His big, bushy tail was everywhere, and the others were getting more and more frustrated. Sandy knew that winter was coming quickly and that the harvest would need to be completed in order for everyone to survive the long, cold months ahead. Sandy again tried to rally the others to speak up, yet she was unsuccessful. The risks were simply too great. Alas, Sandy went to speak to the wise one alone. She told him Don's behavior hadn't stopped and that everyone was feeling more and more uncomfortable. Because of this, the others were wanting to stay away from the nut bank. The winter harvest was in jeopardy. Again, the wise one said, Sandy, don't worry. I promise I will sort this out. Proceed the way you who have always done. Thank you for coming to talk with me. Even though Sandy was worried that Don and his tail would continue to be a problem, Sandy was relieved that she had again talked with the wise one. The wise one grew tired knowing that Don's behavior continued to despite the coming of winter. Despite feeling abandoned, Sandy knew if she could not leave her beloved forest, she requested to be transferred away from Don to the picking fields. During the winter, she was told how much she missed, and Don's antics hadn't stopped. Although saddened, Sandy was also relieved of the stress from working around Don. She hoped that all would be okay. The cold season came and went. Sandy was glad to see some of the trees start to leaf out and some of her friends return to the forest. She had heard Don was still up to his old tricks. Sandy couldn't forget what happened with him, but time and her new job helped her move forward. Despite the, despite the lack of harmony in the forest, Sandy knew she did everything possible to protect it from harm.